I'm going to let you tell me first what you thought of the international bounty hunter, the debut of the guy we've heard so much about that everybody says is such a badass, Jeff Cobb. I wasn't crazy about it. He just seemed like he was another guy after a certain point. I haven't been, I told you before, I haven't been crazy about the Moxley matches. There's something missing to me. I like his entrance. I like his charisma. I like his promo. I'm not crazy about his matches. And I don't know. It was, it was an all right match. Didn't really do it for me. All right. And, and Moxley's matches are better than these. He's had more experience and he's had better training and he's worked with better level of talent. So his matches performance wise, I'm not talking about psychology. I'm just talking about his work performance wise are better than most of the guys on his program. However, I, you know, not knowing what they, maybe it was just, Hey, Jeff Cobb, thanks for coming. But why would you waste a guy when talent is short? And it seems like people think a lot of this guy, well, that's cause that's thing. what it, it was a waste. Yeah, that, that's exactly what I thought. He just, he was another guy after a certain point, he was a big bounty hunter. And then he's just another guy on the roster. I think maybe someone told me that he may not be signed yet. And well, but then, then, was- then why book the fucking match? Like I said, when you start with a blank piece of paper, none of this has to happen. So if you didn't have the guy sign or you didn't know how you wanted to debut him, just put him out there on national TV and do, have a do, job in his first fucking match and then want him to come back and be a fucking player? Oh, well, it's 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 John Moxley that beat him, so, you know, what the... No. No, no, no. Here's the problem with it. Real briefly, Taz joined the desk and immediately business picked up. JR's got the voice. Taz has the energy and the delivery. Tony fills a hole every once in a while. And the masked goof sounds like the fan that won the contest. Um, I love Jericho's sing-along, by the way, but he did not mention he's a heel. On one side of the fence, the people are chanting, Kill the baby face one more time, and on the other side of the fence, the fucking top heel, the people are singing his music even when it's not playing. But here's the thing. This was a regular match back and forth, and now people <clears throat> who don't know the fine points of any of this will say, well, Moxley put him over, you know, because he was he was stronger than Moxley, and he foiled Moxley on a few of the spots. No, it was a regular match with regular match shit. Moxley put him over a little, then they went back and forth, there was nothing to make Cobb different or dangerous. Moxley sold for him fine, like he would sell for any other guy he was trying to have a good match with. Jeff Cobb's shit looked okay, but he made no big impact. Like I said, it, 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 Crusher Blackwell, when he was a physical freak and could do all that shit for the way he looked back in the late 70s, early 80s, Lawler brings him into Memphis. And the first thing, they're standing there waiting for the bell to ring. The bell rings, and immediately Blackwell jumps up and drop kicks Lawler in the fucking face with that body. And the people go, ah, shit. And then Lawler sold for him for 10 fucking minutes and then made a comeback and went to the finish. It wasn't back and forth. You make these guys monsters. Or Abdullah the Butcher, when Gary Hart would bring the fucking hood off and he would burst onto his opponent and fucking savage the guy. Cobb should have come out as a, and he's part Samoan. He should have come out chewing on fucking Moxley's face and hitting him with, with a few of these big moves and fucking toying with him. And Moxley try to fucking find the way to shut him down and duck and dodge and think he's got him and it's turned around again. And Moxley's from underneath the whole fucking time. And Cobb is given several specific things to do to set him apart and make him look like a fucking monster. And keep it short, especially if you're going to beat this fucking guy. But I couldn't believe this finish. I'll talk about that in a second. But they go to the break. In the second segment, it picked up. It was a good regular match. But again, this is not a fucking dangerous bounty hunter. This is some guy that came in and is having a good match with John Moxley. I noticed Scooby-Doo in the front row. I don't know if they've signed him. Apparently, they're flying him now. He maybe helped ratings last week. But have you ever seen a stupider finish? And I've seen this done before. I've hated it every time. As a matter of fact, somebody did it at one of the Ring of Honor fucking seminars. I said, if you ever do that again, I will hire you just to fire you. Cobb gives Moxley a superplex where he bulls him up, powers him up, and superplex him. And when they land, 
Cobb's legs fly up in the air, and Moxley hooks the legs with his legs and pins Cobb one, two, three. It buried Cobb. It buried the superplex. It buried the idea of an outsider bounty hunter. If they say that in the next six months to a year, people will be like, yeah, fuck you. That is the stupidest move and the stupidest finish. How can you be superplexed off the top rope and not sell it and just grab the fucking guy's legs with your own legs and win the match? It kills everything about everybody. Cobb's a pussy because his superplex didn't even jar the fucking guy. The superplex is dead as a move. Cobb is dead because he made a big debut and lost his first fucking match on television. Could they have hurt anybody else in this? Could have hurt your feelings. They did hurt my feelings. I mean, could, could they have done damage to any other facet of what they were trying to do here? Well, yes, yes. Wait a minute. I forgot the afterbirth. Jericho <laughs> and the gang. What? <laughs> the afterbirth? The afterbirth. Okay. After the, that's... Goddamn, does nobody speak wrestling anymore? Even you? The afterbirth is what goes on after the bell, the angle or the fucking business after the match, the afterbirth. Anyway, Jericho and Hager and Guevara have been in the front row because they had tickets. So they get in and get some fucking heat on Moxley, who now is selling. Then Dustin's music plays, and Dustin makes a save. He waited for his music, though. They knew he was coming. Then they get some heat again. Then suddenly a blackout. Then a double blackout. Then Darby Allen's music. He stops on the stage to milk the crowd, stands there as they're cheering for him, and then jumps on his skateboard and rides his skateboard to the ring and makes a comeback on the heels. So let me get this straight. Chris Jericho, Jake Hager, Sammy Guevara, Jeff Cobb, they're all kicking the shit out of poor John Moxley. Dustin Rhodes tries to make the save, but he's beaten down too. And instead of just coming out, running down that fucking ramp with that skateboard and wailing on some people and getting a big pop and saving the day. Darby Allen has to have his, the lights turned off his music play him come out and acknowledge all of his cheers while his friends are being fucking butt raped in the goddamn ring and then rides his skateboard down and then makes a comeback and the heels feed him one at a time. They literally fed him one at a time so he could beat each one of them up individually <clears throat> but then he turned his back on fucking Cobb and Cobb had to run up behind him and go, Hey, I'm here. And then he beat Cobb up too. Thanks for coming, Jeff. And then D D Jericho finally ends up one-on-one -on -one with Moxley and Jericho bails. Thankfully he knows what the fuck he's doing, but this was a, he got the last heat by bailing, but it was a phony fucking mess. Can, how is a, how is a, a run-in and a save and that stuff, how can that be botched up? How can all that look phony? It's not that difficult. I don't understand what they're doing. What'd you think? I thought, if you were going to do that with Darby, you shouldn't have had Dustin come out with his music. And I think they would have reacted better to Dustin just running out there cold with no music. You think? With Darby, I understand that he's super over with that crowd. That was apparent. That may have been the biggest yes. pop of the night. And I'm a fan of his, and I think he has a but, cool uh, but, but then, But then if you're sitting there going, well, you know, I like that Darby Allen, but boy, what a fucking glory hog he is on the stage when these guys are getting the shit kicked out of him and he couldn't come out and help until he took his bows? Well, I hate... The, or does anybody think logically anymore? Well, I've said it before. I hate the lights out thing because that's the most illogical thing in wrestling. And... And then he goes in there and he cleans up. It was, like you said, it was obvious that everyone was feeding him. You know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's weird. Like I think, like, oh, it could have been done better. The fans, they were super into it. But I guess they've just gotten to the point where they accept that things don't have to be logical. Well, and It's all and about the cheap pop. Them, Everything's built around the cheap pop in AEW. Yeah, and, and most of the people in the crowd are not old enough to where they've ever seen this stuff done right. So, yes, they cheer because there's shit going on in front of them, but they don't understand that most people 
don't think that way because most people are not going to watch some phony bullshit. They're only going to watch if it attracts their attention as something they can kind of get into. People who don't necessarily want to watch wrestling, or especially anymore, the old-time wrestling fans, was there's so many of those, but also just people who might not want to watch wrestling for all this stupid bullshit because they think it's stupid bullshit, if they hear MJF talk for a minute and then they see a match like MJF and Jungle Boy, they can get into that because it made sense. And they understood who the people were and why they were doing these things. But all this bullshit, it's for a specific audience and they're not going to make it bigger. And, and, and once it, Darby Allen could have run down that ramp and wailed on everybody with that fucking board and made a comeback just like every top baby face has done since the dawn of fucking time with a bat or a stick or a chair or whatever the fuck and cleared that fucking ring out and got even bigger pop and looked good and got over and it not made the whole thing look stupid and hokey. <clears throat> but modern wrestling presentation, he's got to wait for his music. 